Hi guys, welcome to Genes and Genetic Talk again. So uh, we've got the nature of the genetic code left to discuss. So uh, this is the question that uh, that we finished on in our previous video. So explain what is meant by an allele for one mark. So different form of a gene. And from section one, a quick recap. This explain how DNA replicates. So you should remember this. Four marks for this. You can pause the video now and let's check. So hydrogen bonds will be broken, semi-conservative replication will take place, so both strands will be used as templates, nucleotides will line up with complementary base pairing, adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine, and DNA polymerase will be catalyzing this reaction. So genetic code. So genetic code is a triplet code, so that means that we've got three sequences of the nucleotides. So what is a codon? It's a sequence of three bases, three nucleotides in the mRNA, and each of those triplet of bases is the code for a specific amino acid in a polypeptide sequence. So remember your codon table, it's based on the sequence of codons on the mRNA. Genetic code, what you need to know for the specification, and that's the wording to use in your in your answers. It's a uh, genetic code, it's universal. So each triplet code codes for the same amino acid in all organisms. Non-overlapping means that each base sequence is read only once, so belongs to one triplet. And degenerate means that uh, most amino acids have more than one code so other words that one amino acid could be coded by more than one codon okay so uh, how many codes in fact you should remember that we've got 20 different amino acids and there are four different bases okay so how many codes do we need uh, so every amino acid has its own code we're doing the map scheme using the uh, pair, pair of bases and uh, three bases produce 64 different codes more than enough okay to produce those 20 amino acids so this is a codon table that we were talking about a few times how to use this codon table of course using the sequence of uh, of the codons so this is the sequence of the codons and how can we then uncode what do they code for? So let's go for A, U, G. A, it's the first letter, so we're looking at the first column here. Second position, it's U, so it's there. So we're meeting in this box, and then we're matching with G, which is on that. So coming back to this box, and A, U, G codes for MET. MET is a start codon. So you will see in our next video on the protein synthesis that the protein synthesis will start with MET, uh, amino acid. Right, next amino, uh, next uh, codon here, we've got U, U, G. So let's code for, uh, let's see what U, U, G codon codes for. So U, U, and G, third position, codes for L, E, U. So that's the amino acid coded by U, U, G. So you can try and code for all of those uh, amino acids coded by the uh, codon. So uh, coding and non-coding DNA in the eukaryotic cell, what we will be learning about in terms of the protein synthesis, it's the fact that in the eukaryotic cell we've got a non-coding sequence which is called introns. So introns are non-coding sections of a gene and they will be removed by a process called splicing in the protein synthesis. But exons then there are sections that they can code for an amino acid. So we don't want to leave, remove those, they will stay in here. But in terms of the prokaryotic cells, we don't have introns. So that's, that's the advantage. The protein synthesis will take place faster. So let's have a look at a few questions here. So we've got a piece of DNA that has uh, 47 base pairs and the two strands of DNA, A 
and B were analyzed, okay, to find the number of bases of each type that were present. And some of the results are shown in the table, and you need to complete that table, okay? So what is then your approach, okay? So this is strand A, so don't get confused. That's strand A, that's strand B, okay? So... Um, so what is here the thing that you should use? The complementary base pairs. So guanine and cytosine, they go together. So we expect the same number of those. And adenine goes with timing. So the same idea. So what we've got here, same number of each, what we've just said. So if on the strand A, we've got 26 bases of cytosine, we will then expect 26 uh, basis of guanine on the other one okay because cytosine binds with guanine on the other strand so cytosine on strand b was 19 we need we know that cytosine is going to bind with guanine on strand a hence we've got 19 here adenine we've got 20 on strand a binds with strand b and binds with timing hence we've got 20 for timing same approach for nine for adenine and timing right here we've got the short section of dna molecule name the parts r and q okay so r and q we've got the deoxyribose and pen uh, and phosphate groups be careful, please use deoxyribose because it's a DNA molecule. You don't want to write pentose. That's too general. So be specific, say deoxyribose. Name the bonds that join A and B. So this is then the bond between the uh, bases. So it's a hydrogen bond. And ribonuclease is an enzyme. And it is 127 amino acids long. So what is the maximum number of DNA bases needed to code for this enzyme? Easy thing to remember. Three bases are coding for one amino acid. So what do we need to do with this number? We need to multiply this by three to, to get the number of DNA bases. But here we've got a question. So figure two shows the sequence of DNA bases, which is here, for seven amino acids in the enzyme. Right. What do we remember? It's the fact that three bases coding for one amino acid. So if we've got seven, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, seven. And the number of each amino acid coded by this sequence is shown in the table right so use the table so that and a uh, figure two to work out the sequence of amino acids and write this down in the box below so what do you need to do you need to of course look at the sequence of those triplets because you know like for example tac tac it's going to code for the same amino acid and how many of those repeats of tac we've got Two. So that means that uh, those two will be coding for met amino acid. Using the same approach, complete the rest of the table. So we've got met and met. So we've set, uh, start, uh, finished on TAC here. We've got then TCT, TCT, and TCT. So we've got three the same repeats. So that's ARC. And the final TTA, which is only one, but we already know that GTT was used in the sequence, so that's nothing else than ASN. Question, number, uh, question E, explain how a change in a sequence of DNA bases could result in a non-functional enzyme. So what will happen here? You need to think about the uh, structure of the proteins because all enzymes are proteins so the primary structure it's affected by the sequence of dna so if that will change we will change the final tertiary structure of the enzyme so it's not going to uh, to be uh, to be working as it should so we're changing the sequence of amino acids change in the structure of the tertiary uh, in the tertiary structure by change in the hydrogen bonds so the enzyme substrate complexes 
are not going to be formed due to change of the active site shape. Right, 